nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So here we're starting to look at performance limitations of graphene nanoribbon tunneling FETs due to line edge roughness. This work is primarily done by Mathieu Loisier at Purdue with a new Omen code that we have. Here's an animation that shows you why a MOSFET might be interesting to uh, devices. Uh, sorry, here, yeah, I gotta copy this thing over, otherwise I can't talk to this. We're just gonna leave it like that. Imagine this thing is moving. <laughs> so, in a tunneling uh, transistor, you, you might gain a benefit versus a MOSFET transistor such that your turn on and turn off might happen faster than in a MOSFET. In a MOSFET you're fundamentally limited to a slope of 60 millivolt per decade. You cannot turn off the transistor faster than that. But in a band-to-band -band tunneling device you have a chance to turn it off faster because you have a valence band and a conduction band uh, limiting the thermal excitation path of your carriers. So that fundamentally allows you to uh, have a chance to have a uh, steeper subthreshold swing. And why would you want to do that? You want to reduce power in the, uh, in the device, which is the switching power. So you want to limit the swing you need to over which to switch, and you want to reduce the voltage. So graphene has an, a capability or offers the, the, the chance to build a band-to-band -band tunneling transistor because if you take graphene or a graphite sheet and make it uh, into a thin ribbon, a graphene nano ribbon, your dispersion uh, looks roughly like as shown on the right. Uh, it allows you to have a gap. Um, the gap does depend on the thickness of this graphene uh, ribbon. Uh, it's a one-dimensional structure. It is compatible with planar technology. It has a low effective mass, which is good, so carriers will move rapidly. It, in principle, has a tunable band gap by width. Uh, the bad thing is that the band gap is dependent on a nanowire ribbon, uh, on the ribbon width. And there is going to be an influence of these edges uh, on this band structure. And, and, and effects of roughness will be important. And the topic of this presentation is to see how important such fluctuations might be. So I'm going to start out with giving you some band structure and transport models and talk about an ideal graphene nabana ribbon first, then line edge roughness, and then a conclusion and outlook. So the band structure model that is being used here is a very simple one. It's the nearest neighbor PZ uh, tight binding uh, orbital method. The dispersion corresponds to the one shown here in red. And underneath in blue is shown a GW calculation of a graphene nano ribbon. Uh, and it's clear that we're only doing reasonably okay in terms of our band structure at this crossover point where the homo and lumo bands meet. The good thing is we have an atomistic description um, where we can represent each atom explicitly. It's also computationally efficient because it's really only a single parameter with a single orbital. Uh, the bad part is not really full band. So if there's really thing, anything happening in band mixtures or confinement, we're, we're back to the limitations of a true two-band model. What is being solved here is not the full negative equation set because we don't need to. In the coherent transport part, you can show that instead of doing matrix inversion uh, of E minus H minus sigma, 
gr equal 1, you can actually show that the wave function approach is just a linear system of <coughs> equations and you can solve it without scattering and without boundary conditions that need an eta or a relaxation, you can solve it much faster in the wave function approach. So in an ideal nano ribbon, you can define uh, uh, the structure and optimize it and I'll show you some of the transfer characteristics. So in an ideal PIN uh, tunneling transistor, you have uh, uh, chosen here a 5.1 nanometer graphene nano ribbon deposited on silicon dioxide. There's a one nanometer effective oxide thickness. There's a 40 nanometer gate length as indicated here on the top and a 25 nanometer source and drain extension. Uh, electrostatic potential is computed in three dimensions. Uh, we assume a supply voltage of VDD of 0.2 volts and assume symmetric doping and we uh, have a uh, graphene nanoribbon band gap of 0.251. So here is a electrostatic potential profile on the top right where you see uh, under a, a gated potential we have shifted the gate region uh, down and there's a finite bias applied between source and drain. If we take this device and calculate an ideal uh, characteristic, we get an ion of 225 microamps per micrometer, an off current of 37 nanoamps per micrometer, and a subthreshold slope of 12 millivolt per decade. So that's significantly steeper than the ideal MOSFET curve of 60 millivolt per decade. One of the items that we want to achieve is to decrease the off-current and possibly increase the on-current. Uh, 